Comparative law is the study of differences and similarities between the law of different countries. More specifically, it involves study of the different legal systems in existence in the world, including the common law, the civil law, socialist law, Jewish law, Islamic law, Hindu law, and Chinese law. It includes the description and analysis of foreign legal systems, even where no explicit comparison is undertaken. The importance of comparative law has increased enormously in the present age of internationalism, economic globalization and democratization. History The origins of modern comparative law can be traced back to 18th century Europe, although, prior to that, legal scholars had always practiced comparative methodologies. Montesquieu is generally regarded as an early founding figure of comparative law. His comparative approach is obvious in the following excerpt from Chapter 3 of Book 1 of his masterpiece, De l'Esprit des Lois. T. He political and civil laws of each nation should be adapted in such a manner to the people for whom they are framed that it should be a great chance if those of one nation suit another. They should be in relation to the nature and principle of each government. Whether they form it, as may be said of politic laws, or whether they support it, as in the case of civil institutions, they should be in relation to the climate of each country, to the quality of its soil, to its situation and extent, to the principal occupation of the natives, whether husbandmen, huntsmen, or shepherds. They should have relation to the degree of liberty which the constitution will bear, to the religion of the inhabitants, to their inclinations, riches, numbers, commerce, manners, and customs. Also, in chapter 11 of book 29, discussing the French and English systems for punishment of false witnesses, he advises that, to determine which of those systems is most agreeable to reason, we must take them each as a whole and compare them in their entirety. Yet another place where Montesquieu used comparative approach as evident is the following, from chapter 13 of book 29. As the civil laws depend on the political institutions because they are made for the same society, whenever there is a design of adopting the civil law of another nation, it would be proper to examine beforehand whether they have both the same institutions and the same political law. The modern founding figure of comparative and anthropological jurisprudence was Sir Henry Maine, a British jurist and legal historian. In his 1861 work Ancient Law, its connection with the early history of society, and its relation to modern ideas. He set out his views on the development of legal institutions in primitive societies and engaged in a comparative discussion of Eastern and Western legal traditions. This work placed comparative law in its historical context and was widely read and influential. The first university course on the subject was established at the University of Oxford in 1869, with Maine taking up the position of professor. Comparative law in the U.S. was brought by a legal scholar fleeing persecution in Germany, Rudolf Schlesinger. Schlesinger eventually became professor of comparative law at Cornell Law School helping to spread the discipline throughout the U.S. Purpose Comparative law is an academic study of separate legal systems. Each one analyzed in its constitutive elements, how they differ in the different legal systems, and how their elements combine into a system. Several disciplines have developed as separate branches of comparative law, including comparative constitutional law, comparative administrative law, comparative civil law, comparative commercial law, and comparative criminal law. Studies of these specific areas may be viewed as micro or macro comparative legal analysis, i.e., detailed comparisons of two countries, or broad-ranging studies of several countries. Comparative civil law studies, for instance, show how the law of private relations is organized, interpreted and used in different systems or countries. It appears today the principal purposes of comparative law are to attain a deeper knowledge of the legal systems in effect, to perfect the legal systems in effect, possibly to contribute to a unification of legal systems of a smaller or larger scale relationship with other legal subjects.
Comparative law is different from the fields of general jurisprudence, international law, including both public international law and private international law. Despite the differences between comparative law and these other legal fields, comparative law helps inform all of these areas of normativity. For example, comparative law can help international legal institutions, such as those of the United Nations system, in analyzing the laws of different countries regarding their treaty obligations. Comparative law would be applicable to private international law when developing an approach to interpretation in a conflict analysis. Comparative law may contribute to legal theory by creating categories and concepts of general application. Comparative law may also provide insights into the question of legal transplants, i.e., the transplanting of law and legal institutions from one system to another. The notion of legal transplants was coined by Alan Watson, one of the world's renowned legal scholars specializing in comparative law. Also, the usefulness of comparative law for sociology of law and law and economics is very large. The comparative study of the various legal systems may show how different legal regulations for the same problem function in practice. Conversely, sociology of law and law and economics may help comparative law answer questions, such as, how do regulations in different legal systems really function in the respective societies? Are certain legal rules comparable? How do the similarities and differences between legal systems get explained? Classifications of legal systems. Armin John, Nolder, and Wolf Armin John, Nolder, and Wolf believe that, for purposes of classifying the contemporary legal systems of the world, it was required that those systems per se get studied, irrespective of external factors, such as geographical ones. They propose the classification of legal system into seven groups, or so-called families, in particular the French group, under which they also included the countries that codified their law either in 19th or in the first half of the 20th century. Using the Napoleonic Code Civil of year 1804 as a model, this includes countries and jurisdictions such as Italy, Portugal, Spain, Romania, Louisiana, states of South America, Quebec, Santa Lucia, the Ionian Islands, Egypt, and Lebanon, German Group, Scandinavian Group, English Group, Russian Group, Islamic Group, Hindu Group, David René David proposed the classification of legal systems, according to the different ideology inspiring each one, into five groups or families. Western laws, a group subdivided into the Romano-Germanic subgroup, Anglo-Saxon subgroup, Soviet law, Muslim law, Hindu law, Chinese law. Jewish law, especially with respect to the aggregating by David of the Romano-Germanic and Anglo-Saxon laws into a single family. David argued that the antithesis between the Anglo-Saxon laws and Romano-German laws is of a technical rather than of an ideological nature. Of a different kind is, for instance, the antithesis between the Italian and the American law, and of a different kind that between the Soviet, Muslim, Hindu, or Chinese law. According to David, the Romano-Germanic legal systems included those countries where legal science was formulated according to Roman law, whereas common law countries are those where law was created from the judges. The characteristics that he believed uniquely differentiate the Western legal family from the other four are liberal democracy, capitalist economy, Christian religion. Sfigat and Kotz Conrad Sfigat and Hein Kotz propose a different, multidimensional methodology for categorizing laws, i.e., for ordering families of laws. They maintain that, to determine such families, five criteria should be taken into account, in particular, the historical background, the characteristic way of thought, the different institutions, the recognized sources of law, and the dominant ideology. Using the aforementioned criteria, they classify the legal systems of the world into six families. Roman family, German family, common law family, Nordic family.
family of the laws of the Far East, religious family, up to the second German edition of their introduction to comparative law. Zweigert and Kotz also used to mention Soviet or socialist law as another family of laws, professional associations, American Society of Comparative Law, International Association of Procedural Law, International Law Association, International Association of Judicial Independence and World Peace, Comparative Law Periodicals, American Journal of Comparative Law, German Law Journal, Journal of Comparative Legislation and International Law, The Journal of Comparative Law.